Hey guys, John Haddock here. What's going on? Today I'm going to talk about comics that came out earlier in the month and how these comics, I think, are going to be books that you want to follow going into next month. Uh, first, I have Spider-Man, number one, by J.J. Abrams and his son Henry Abrams. And this is an Elseworld story that's going to take place outside the main canon of the traditional Spider-Man sense. Basically, Elseworlds, but for Marvel. Um, read this book, liked the art, liked what they went with the story. Kind of mirrored some stuff that we've seen in the past, but um, this book went in a direction that I was totally not expecting. Totally threw me off. Definitely something I'm going to be picking up next month, and I can't wait to read issue number two. Uh, the next book I have is going to be Justice League by Snyder. Um, this is DC's big, big book. I mean, um, I mean, at least I think it is. I think you know this is the book that they're using to to set up the Year of the Villain storylines. This is going to Te this book teases the big fight with Lex Luthor now that he's this apex predator god being. Um, this book is the foundation for these stories that are going to be coming out that DC is, is really pushing with the whole Year of the Villain situation. This book, it's very confusing it can be if you're not big on the DC lore. We're talking about you know the anti-monitor, the monitor, all those beings. So you might want to read up on your DC lore before you pick this up, but this is one of those... Uh, it's one of those smart books that definitely rewards you for knowing a lot about the DC Universe. Um, next is a book that a lot of people, I think, really aren't reading. It's uh, the new Daredevil series. I'm a big Daredevil fanboy, so just let me just hear me out before you go. You just like Daredevil, that's why. This is a book that I think is showing Daredevil in a way that we haven't seen him before. In, in this new series, he is the man with fear. Um, he's definitely you know second-guessing himself. In a way that he normally didn't before, like he's scared that he's going to fail, scared that, scared that he's going to let other people down, scared that he's because of his actions he can get somebody else killed, and because of that we get to see Daredevil in a different, uh, a different light, and we get to see uh, Mayor, F Mayor Fisk and how that plays with uh, Matt still being a part of the DA and and being a part in, in Fisk's you know uh, I guess law enforcement agency. Uh, the next issue of this comes out uh, October 2nd. Uh, definitely must read. I know they have the previous stuff on trades. Uh, Marvel's been real good with popping out trades when storyline's ending. This is one of those books. If you love the Netflix show, definitely check it out. You won't be disappointed. A book that I, uh, I definitely picked up when I heard about it was Legion of the Superheroes. I'm a big fan of these guys. They're really hokey. They're just you know happy-go-lucky comics that you hardly ever see today. Everything's dark and serious. The Legion of Superheroes was always famous just for having you know quirky characters, fun stories. They reminded me of like the Adam Strange space books that that you would get in the Silver Age and that. Um, but with this, it's written by Bendis, and one of the things that we see um, is a character, and we follow her. It's Rose and Thorn. We follow her as she travels throughout the different times building up to the Legion of Superheroes. Wasn't expecting on how the format of this book worked, but you know they're teasing uh, Superboy to join, Jonathan Kent, Superman's son, to join them. So I think that's going to be the push that this book needs going into Legion of Superheroes 1. Um, definitely pick up the past couple issues of Superman. Um, I know it's been rough, but they're, they're bringing Superman back to Earth, and they're going to they're gonna highlight the whole, hey, look, Superboy is going to be joining the Legion of Superheroes. And this is definitely um, something I'm really excited for. Even though this book wasn't what I wanted it to be, it's it's building up to something good. At least I, I think so, and I, I really hope for. Here's a series um, that I think everyone is getting if you're reading comics. It's Batman, and this is the City of Bane storyline. Unfortunately, I think that they're just dragging this out really, really long. This is one of those books that I really want to just... I want the climax to happen. I want to see... The ending. I want to see the battle between Batman and Bane, and and where's this relationship with Catwoman and them going? There's a lot of build up, and that's why I have this book as something I think you should go and read, because they're just hyping and hyping and hyping. And I think when that issue does come out with the finale, it's going to be huge. It's going to have huge consequences for Batman and the and the new writer who's taking over, who's currently writing Detective Comics. I think he's going to have a lot on his plate because of the fallout of of this series. Um, definitely check this out if you're a Batman fan. Now, here's a book that I uh, I was kind of scared to get. Um, flash forward from the pages of Heroes in Crisis. Once I saw Heroes in Crisis, I kind of bit my tongue and was like, I don't know, because that was kind of 
it was a book that made me really think is it is this book really really good or is it really bad i kind of kind of was in the middle of it but towards the end i hated what they did to wally west they brought back a beloved character and they just did him dirty um but this book is trying to to, to save him and and bring him back into the dc universe in the in the uh the righteousness that wally west is and what kind of character he is and really bring him back as the good guy that the DC universe needs. Um, once again, this is the Superman book. This is uh, issue 15. This just basically shows, you know, hey, look, here's the Legion of Superheroes. They're back from the future, and they want to recruit John Kent. You get to see all of them, and they kind of play around and hint at a lot of ideas that, hey, look, we want to bring him back in. I mean, bring Superboy in and and he's, you know, better than you, Superman. Like, he's the one we want, not you. So it's kind of cool to see that dynamic where Superman isn't the primary focus. It's his son. And, I, you know, what I thought was cool was Bendis does a good job at showing Superman's kind of eerie about that. He doesn't know how to take it because he's so used to everyone gravitating towards him. They're gravitating towards his son, for uh, which is different for him because that doesn't normally happen. He's the guy. So for that, I really appreciated that this book and how it how it uh, portrayed that, um, because Legion of Superheroes is building into a big storyline and the fact that they're bringing Superman back to Earth. I think this this book is gonna pick back from what it originally was when Rebirth originally started, and we we all love the Superman book and, and it was doing real good. Uh, the last book that I have here is Batman and Superman. Um, this is a title out of the, uh, it's a, it's a follow up to the Batman who laughs and this is going to be showing the, the world's finest Batman and Superman teaming up to take on the Batman who laughs and we're, we're seeing how drawn out and how thought out the Batman who laughs plan is and how he's, he's infected Shazam and how he's built other Batarangs to uh, infect, uh, other superheroes that's been in, he infused the Batarangs with, uh, Nymph Metal and he's using that to, to um, take over other heroes that Batman and Superman are going to have to fight. Um, you know, this is just, this is really cool. It's one of the better Batman and Superman team-ups. I know we've seen a bunch of them in the past, but this one's really, really cool just because, you know, the Batman who laughs is, I think, a villain that deserves uh, the treatment of Batman and Superman to fight him. A lot of times when we see these characters team up, it's kind of on a villain that you're just like, oh, really? The Joker, Lex Luthor, like, we've seen this before. Here we see an evil Batman who has all of Batman's planning, all of his strategy, and he's using it to take out the League and the, and the other DC heroes. Definitely something I'm going to be picking up next month, and I want you guys to pick up too. Um, lastly is I want to talk about two books that are going to be coming out. There are going to be trades hardcovers that I think if you're not somebody who wants to read the the single issues and you want a really good story and you want a lot of it and a, a lot of content uh, for the most you know bang for your buck uh, definitely uh, Immortal Hulk the hard deluxe edition is going to be coming out this month and towards the end of the month I believe that comes out on the, the 14th or the 12th it's mid mid October is when that book's coming out the big book though that I'm really excited for is uh, Absolute Swamp Thing is, is going to be dropping unless it gets delayed again at the end of this month. It's got a kind of a pricey price tag. Um, I'm th I, last time I looked, it was it was 80 bucks, but that is definitely worth it. You're going to be getting the whole Alan Moore, at least the first part of it. I don't know how they're going to be doing it. I haven't been trying to, I haven't seen the whole layout of how they're going to be releasing this. But you're going to be getting the the most bang for your buck there, especially if you liked uh, the DC show uh, Swamp Thing and how it did the horror aspect of the character because that's where it draw most of its inspiration from was those books. Um, so that's definitely something that if you're if you're a, a collector like me or you want to add it to your library, I would definitely jump on it and get it. You know, Amazon, in stock trades, cheap tray, it's like cheap cheapgraphicnovels.com. Check out those web websites. Get those books um, if you haven't read them; they're phenomenal. Uh, Swamp Thing, it's it's not really for kids. The Immortal Hulk's pretty gruesome too, but not on the same level as Swamp Thing. The other thing I want to talk about that's coming out in October is we're finally getting the wrap up to uh, Power and House of X, and we're going to see a lot of the X Men number ones coming out. Um, and I think you know that's going to be cool, but at the same time, it's something to be you know cognizant of. Is that Marvel is going to be releasing them like a toy line? We're getting, you know, uh, X Men, uh, 
whatchamacallit, X-Men, New Mutants, uh, Excalibur, X-Force, uh, and a couple other ones that were, oh, uh, the, the one with Psylocke, X-23, and another female. So we're getting a numerous books for these X-Men titles. So I know me and Bethay are going to be getting all of them. We're going to be doing a video on them and uh, which ones are good. And those are the ones that we're going to continue to follow. And hopefully they don't keep pushing those. They kind of sit there and say, hey, look, here's all these characters from the X-Men. They do what they do. And then they build off those separate stories and then they come together in the end to maybe two or three books instead of five. Because I think, I think that's just easier on us as the consumer instead of buying you know five X-Men books a month or however many they have, plus the tie-ins that happen, not to mention you know the big events that are going on with other characters. So hopefully they, they kind of you know take a break on our wallets, but I doubt it. Um, but as always, guys, thanks for watching. Keep reading comics. Uh, support your local comic book store. Give a like. Give it a subscribe. Hit me up in the comments. We'll get back to you. Love to have discussions with you. Hit us up on something you guys want us to talk about. Thanks, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day.